Hey guys, today I'm going to do a review of a game that I just finished playing last night, and that game is Catherine for the PS3. Um, they also have a version of this out for the Xbox 360, it just has a different cover. So if after this review you're interested in playing the game, that is the two different systems that you can pick it up for. Now, this game... I wasn't really sure how I was going to feel about it when I first got it. I really wanted to buy it. Um, I pre-ordered it actually just so I would get the extra goodies that you get when you get the game. And also because it was developed by Atlas. And I am a huge fan of Atlas. So even though I had read about the game, um, I really wasn't sure what to expect still. It's kind of a weird game that you really don't really get a chance to quite understand until you actually play it, I would say. I mean, it's kind of hard to describe it, but I'm going to try my best. So, the game starts off with you as the main character, who is a regular Joe Schmo kind of a guy. Uh, the character's name is Vincent, and he's basically kind of a schlub. He's got a girlfriend whose name is Catherine with a K, he works kind of a, you know, dead-end kind of job. You'll see in the game that the apartment that you get to live in is kind of janky. It's, like, really small. So, I mean, you play kind of a regular kind of Joe Schmo guy. Basically, the story goes in the way that Vincent wakes up in bed next to a beautiful, voluptuous blonde, Catherine with a C. So now he has cheated on his girlfriend accidentally. He didn't mean to cheat on her. And now he has to deal with the repercussions of that in the game. The gameplay itself is really interesting. It sort of alternates between two different modes of gameplay with cutscenes in between all of that. And the two different types of gameplay are this. Um, during the nightmare stages, which is when Vincent goes home and goes to sleep, are the famous block puzzle. Now, when I read about the game, I really didn't understand the puzzles, how they worked. Um, basically, you start at the bottom of a tower kind of thing. It's not really a tower, but you're down at the bottom. And you have to pull out blocks you know, to climb on top of them, to climb on top of other blocks, and you're trying to move your way up. So, it sounds kind of weird, or, you know, I'm not a big fan of puzzle games, really, so I really didn't think that I was going to like it very much, because I'm not a big Tetris type of person, or any puzzle games, really, other than maybe a Zelda-esque type puzzle. These puzzles are actually a lot more fun than you would think that they would be. They're really cool. You get used to it after a while. At first it seems kind of hard, and then it just sort of becomes natural to you. And between stages of puzzles, if you talk to the sheep characters, they will help you with ways to get up the tower and climb the blocks. They will help you by telling you different ways that you can do that, and show you different techniques, is what they're called, to climb the tower. Once you start getting more used to the block puzzles, they will start throwing different kinds of things at you with the blocks. There will be trap blocks that have spikes that come out and get you, and there are a variety of other kinds of blocks to either help you or throw you, you know, a difficult sort of challenge in the game. Um, I actually prefer going through the kind of obstacles of the different kinds of blocks. I find that to be a lot more fun than, say, the boss stages, which, yes, there are boss stages. They happen every couple block puzzles, and it'll be somebody who has different types of attacks. They'll be throwing, you know, blocks out of your way. They'll be stabbing at you or something like that, and you have to move it pretty quick. Um, I actually started playing the game on normal mode. I think I got to level the level 3 boss, um, and I had to switch to easy mode. Unfortunately, you can't just switch right before you go into boss mode. You cannot change your difficulty setting once you're already doing the nightmare stages. You have to choose before you start doing them. 
And I kind of thought that that was one mistake with the game. I felt like if you could have changed your difficulty settings before you did a boss, it would have been a lot nicer because I wanted to play the rest of the game on normal mode, but there was no way that I could beat some of those bosses on the normal setting. It was just not going to happen. So I did end up playing the rest of the game in easy mode. When I play through it again, I probably will take a stab at trying to do normal mode. The other aspect of gameplay during this game are the stages between the puzzle block stages. During these stages, you will be playing Vincent and taking control of him and navigating him through the bar that him and his friends hang out at called the Stray Sheep. While you're at the bar, you can talk to other patrons of the bar, you can talk to them about their problems, find out information, you can check your cell phone, sometimes people will call you or text message you and you can reply to the text messages if you feel like it. You don't have to, but you can. And one of the really cool things about that is that you can pick different options of things that you want to say in your text messages. It's not just a free-for-all where you can write anything you want. Um, there aren't a lot of choices for this, but there are a few, so it's kind of interesting, and it does affect what happens to you in the game somewhat. You can also drink alcohol while you're there at the bar, of course. You can drink uh, four different types of drinks, and, you know, the more alcohol that you consume, the faster Vincent is going to move during the block puzzle stages. So, you know... Those are basically the things that you do while you're hanging out at the stray sheep. And the game alternates between those two types of stages. There is not a whole lot of action in the game, but it is kind of fast paced while you're playing the block puzzle stages. So, you know, you're not going to be crushing bad guys or anything like that, but there are a lot of different interesting things that they do with the block puzzles to make it a lot more fun than you would think. One of the really good things about this game is that there are eight different endings to the game. So that is one cool thing. There are a lot of different things that can happen to you in the game. Aside from the endings, I also believe that there are other cutscenes and things that happen throughout the game if you're playing it based on your choices. So they'll ask you questions a lot or you'll have different responses to different things, different scenarios in the game, and there's a, actually a bar. But you can be either in the blue or the red, or you can be in the middle, based on the options that you choose in the game. So that is one really cool thing about the game. Playing it only took me about 15 hours, a little bit less than that, and I feel like I took my time with the game. The music in the game is another really redeeming quality of the game. Um, the music is done by Shoji Maguro, the guy that composes basically all of the music for the Persona games. Um, Atlas just loves to use him for different things and projects. A, a lot of people really enjoy his music. Um, with the game that you buy, if you buy it from Amazon.com, I know for sure that you get the goodies that come with it still right now if you buy it before they run out. And what you get with the game is you get... The game itself, of course. And then you also get an art book. And in the art book, you know, it's it's kind of a... The art book I really wasn't really that impressed with. But in the back of it, you get a soundtrack CD. And the soundtrack is... Um, basically, all of it is classical music that is sort of remixed by Shoji Meguro. So, it's really interesting. It sounds kind of weird, but it's a really interesting type of music, and I really like the way that it sounds. Some of the things that I did not like about this game were it could be kind of repetitive at times. The puzzles were not repetitive, but a lot of times in the other mode of gameplay when you were talking to people, I felt like they were telling me the same things over and over again and it would be like yeah you already told me that but thanks for sharing again or yeah I kind of already figured that out but uh thanks for beating me over the head with it like they kept telling you about the curse and the nightmares and what was causing them like you would just forget the things that they had already told you about the game 
Um, another thing that I didn't really appreciate too much, um, but I sort of am lenient about, I guess, were the pictures that Catherine with the C will sometimes send you on her cell phone. Um, you know, I don't, it really wasn't that bad, but the game is rated mature. So, the pictures are a little racy, um, you know, in the art book there are some pictures that are a little bit racy, and I really just, as a girl who likes to play games, just don't really need to see that, and I really don't even think that they need to incorporate that kind of stuff into games, but that's just a personal opinion. I already mentioned, you can only change your difficulty setting while you're at the stray sheet. So, that was a little bit frustrating as well. The controls in the game were kind of hard to grasp at first for me, and at times when I would be climbing Vincent around the back of a block, he would just fall off randomly and die because I would be trying to climb up instead of drop down, and I would accidentally pushing the wrong button or something like that. So it was a little bit difficult for me to control, but I got used to it and it was a lot better after that. Um, the audio for me was also a little weird at times. The sound was like really loud during the movie cutscenes, but then during the scenes with the CGI people talking to each other, it was quieter. So I kept having to change the volume on the TV because I would turn it up really loud so I could hear the CGI cutscenes, but when it would switch over to an animated cutscene, it would be blaringly loud and I'd have to turn it down really fast. So that was a little bit of an oversight I felt like that maybe could have been fixed before the game came out. It was kind of weird that the audio didn't really stay on the same volume level. That was kind of weird. I don't know if anybody else experienced problems with that or if that was just a personal problem. But those were the only minor critiques that I have with the game of my own personal standing. I would definitely give the game like probably an 8.5 or a 9 out of 10. It was a really cool game. So that's pretty much how I felt overall about it. The quirkiness of it and the fun gameplay, you know, the the movie scenes are also really cool because it's kind of like a mystery and you really don't know what's going to happen to the character. You get really curious about what in the world is going to happen. So all of those are really positive things. The music, also very good. The just everything else about the game is excellent. The only things that I mentioned that were bad were the things I already mentioned, so, and that was only minor things. All in all, I would say that you should definitely buy this game, or at least, in the very least, rent it. But I would buy it. It's a really cool game, and I feel like even if you played it through a bunch of times and saw different endings, and, you know, you could always play this game again because the puzzles are always going to be fun to do. And you can always try to figure out different ways to solve the puzzles. You know, it's definitely a really cool game to have. One of the critiques of this game was that it might have better served as an anime. Because there are a lot of cutscenes in the game. So a lot of times you're not doing anything really active in the game. But you're watching, you know, a cutscene that lasts five to seven minutes long maybe. So a lot of the game is cutscenes or um, dialogue, things like that. If you do not like a game with movie type aspects, you might not like this game very much. But I think that everybody should probably give it a go. Um, even if you, you know, don't like puzzle games, I don't like puzzle games, I still really enjoyed this. Um, it can be fun to play with other people, and you can just keep trading off with somebody else that you're playing with, solve the puzzles together, or you can have them try to help you. I know I'm not very good at puzzles, so it was really nice to have somebody helping me with it. So I would definitely say buy this game, because it's a lot of fun. It's quirky. It's very quirky. This game is really weird. Um, it's sort of surreal, I guess. A lot of it is. And it's really... It's almost indescribable, but it's definitely a different kind of game. I have never played a game like this before, ever. So if you like playing something different, something kind of fresh or new, get this game. Buy it, because it's really fun. Thank you, you guys, for watching my video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys buy this game, or at least play it. So, thanks for watching. Bye.